we're in a little bit of an emergency situation here. We have uh, between sometime between last night and this afternoon, uh, it's 12 o'clock right now, the power, the breaker at the barn which supplies power to the building went out. And lane two, which has the most fish in it, has had a massive fish die because the bubbler and the aquaponic systems haven't been working. Now, normally I just throw the fish away. These ones are big and they've been kept cool for a while. This didn't, they didn't die very long ago. So like if you're out fishing, you know, you catch the fish, you put them in your cooler, they can last quite a while as long as they stay cool. So they died sometime in the last few hours. So I'm just sharpening my uh, fillet knife here and uh, I'm gonna get you some pictures of them because they're really beautiful. And uh, we've been wondering what they're gonna taste like. Now we have a really good excuse to figure that out. I just have to move fast. So what I did is I, I grabbed them all, it's probably about 15 of them maybe, they're big, and uh, put them into a bucket and ran them up here to the house and put a bunch of ice and water in it to uh, keep them cool for a lot longer. The water out there is right around 60, so they're nice and cold, they don't have any slime on them, I mean other than normal fish stuff, but you know when they die, uh, oh my god it's going to... When they die and you really don't want to touch them, they actually get a really gooey, uh, slimy substance over them. So let me show you what we got here. And these ones, they all came out nice. You guys take it easy. So, little ones like that. Then we got big ones like this. This is too much to throw away. So we're gonna go try to harvest these and uh, see what we can do. I just need a gut bucket. Well, it's been a while since I've done this. I haven't been fishing in a long time, but what we got set up here, ice bucket fish, gut bucket with a bag in it, cutting table, and some ice water with my whiskey, my whiskey ice cubes in there because I used all the ice cubes in the bucket. So we're gonna get started here. See what we can do. <clears throat> Big guys. Nice and cold still, like I said, so here we go. Do some views here. Okay, what I got, got all the fish gutted. Here they are, all nice and pretty. Look at them, look how big they are. Look how pretty. This is a really nice one. So this is the third bucket I've had them in as far as water goes. And we're trying to get all the blood out. And uh, the blood is what leads to the, the fishy taste that a lot of people don't like. So we want to try to get as much of the blood out of them as possible. So here, this was clean water just a few moments ago. You can see as I agitate it here, it kind of gets a little more red, brownish color. And I've cleaned out most of all the stuff I can get with the knife there. Nice and clean on the inside. So now what we want to do, we've got a nice clean bucket of water right there. And we'll put some salt into it. And that salt helps get that uh, blood out of them. And leads to a nicer, cleaner tasting fish. So it tastes more like the meat rather than like water or fish food or, you know, uh, pond water kind of stuff. So I'm going to get some salt. We're going to put it in there and we're going to move everything over. Now, they sell a lot bigger containers of salt than this. But since this is kind of unplanned, unprepared, this is what we got. Right in there. Okay. Agitate that a little. Here we go. Here's the count. One nice fish. Two. Three. I think that's the big guy. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 
15, 16, and 17 here, plus there's two that were just too small and I didn't even worry about getting them. So what is that? 17. 17 fish. Quite the experiment. Here, check out the difference of the color of water there and there. So now we're going to let it sit for a while and let that salt yeah, do its work. We just gave the chickens two of the fish, two of the baby fish. And they appear to be staring at it very, very hard. Ooh, there's one. All right, so we hooked them up with a fish head, two, two small fish, and some of the fish eggs and guts just to see what happens. That's it. Our chickens like fish. I was able to get them all gutted and cleaned, and it uh, looks like everything's fine. Uh, they all stayed nice and cold, and uh, we actually seem to kind of nail it down that it's only been about a few hours since uh, the oxygen, the pump stopped working, all the electricity went out and uh, all that. So I think we're going to be good. We're actually going to be cooking them up tonight. We're going to cook one up uh, my way the camping way, and then we're going to cook one up Mrs. Martian's way, which will probably taste better and will be really, really beautiful because uh, she's an amazing cook. But what I want to show you, I actually, I was sitting there kind of worried. Uh, I thought we are going to have to use a whole bunch of our microgreen uh, distribution bins here that we have tons of um, to store all this fish because I was like, oh, we don't really have enough foil. Uh, we're going to have to do saran wrap and all that. And I went, wait a second. It's been like a few years since I've been hunting and fishing, uh, three years I think, but we have a food saver. No. So, I spared you all the details, but I got 17 fish all packaged up, real nice and pretty. Look at that. You guys want to buy some? I guess we'll see how they taste first, huh? Anyway, so we got them all packaged up, going to put them in these Rubbermaids lids on, burp it, and then we're going to go put these in the freezer because uh, we don't know how they taste yet, but we don't want them to spoil. So, because I think they are going to be great, the meat looks great, uh, it's nice and white, uh, and trout meat can be white or it can be pink, it just depends on their diet, and with the diet that we have for them, looks like it's going to be white. Uh, so, there we go, Oops. two of them, 17 fish, two trays, uh, I put two big fish in each one, the equivalent of two big fish, one for me, one for Mrs. Martian, so we can eat and just take it out of the freezer, grab it, and then thaw it out and cook it. So, uh, next step is to actually cook them. Welcome to Cooking with Martian. How about that, huh? Today we're going to be making trout. I'm going to be using the mountain method, which involves a piece of foil, onions, carrots, and miscellaneous spices. I think carrots are a must when having rainbow trout. So we're having a contest tonight to see who's, whose trout turns out better. Who do you think is going to be better? Me. Mrs. Martian says hers. She's probably right. But I don't know. I'm going to give her a good run for her money. So here they are. My trout. Look at that meat. It is beautiful. I'm going to do a little olive oil. And if you're up in the mountains, you just use butter. Or whatever fat you got. I'm going to take this stuff. How those get in my, my mix? I put some green things in there because they were in there. I'm not really sure what they are. What's the green stuff in the onion bowl? Cilantro. Ooh, it'll be delicious. Okay. Now I'm going to get my syrup started. So I'm going to four cups of apple cider. High heat, the higher the heat, it'll start really bubbling and reducing. Some sugar in there. 
You can't cook anything without pepper. Lots of pepper. There's the pepper. Some salt. And of course, garlic. That looks pretty good. Food inspector. Here we go. Now let's crank this bad boy up. Go get them. Raymond Ranch aquaponic trout. Will it be good? Will it be bad? Will we get sick? We don't know. I think it's gonna be great. And no, I don't think we're gonna get sick. I wouldn't do this if I did. That would be stupid. Anyway, see how it all goes. Okay, let's check out and see what the competition is up to. Ah! Oh. You put freaking foil on it. I can't see how she cooked it. That's not fair. Okay, well, we'll go out and check uh, our trout, see how it's doing. Oh, yeah, it's starting to look good. Move my temperature probe here. Oh, it just slides right in. Real nice. This is cool grill because it's got the temperature probe, so you know you know exactly what temperature is at. It looks like we're pretty much done, so I'm gonna drop the temp on this. Okay, so now it's cooling down, and uh, we're just moments away from being able to try out this uh, this trout. We've got Mr. Martian. Mrs. Martian. Both of them are Martian trout. We're gonna plate this up and see how it tastes. I'm still alive. <laughs> we ate the fish last night. Um, I think as far as who won goes, it was pretty close to a tie. Uh, Mrs. Martian's had significantly more fancy flavor and mine was more traditional. Uh, but they both came out really good and the fish was of great quality. Really, really nice tender fish firm, uh, wasn't too slimy or fatty or anything like that. Uh, so very, very happy with our first results from uh, the trout harvest. Um, it was definitely unexpected, but we've kind of been wanting to know how they tasted and now, now we do. Uh, so they're all, the rest of them I got them all bagged up there, put them in the freezer uh, in their little rubber mid, Rubbermaid totes, excuse me, so we should be good there. Uh, you know, it's a valuable lesson. Things like this happen and initially I think I'm a failure and, you know, I didn't didn't do something right. In this case, the power went out, the, the breaker tripped all the way up at the barn, the main power supply. None of the breakers tripped out at the actual uh, location, at the building. They tripped up higher, and uh, I don't know what caused that. Uh, I can't track it down, uh, so I'll have to keep an eye out for it. But what it taught us is that we need to have a dead man switch, something that's essentially saying, uh, I have power, I have power, I have power, and then as soon as it doesn't have power, the system tells us, power is out, get your butt out there and do something about it. Um, that's a piece of automation that we absolutely must have and was not on the radar, uh, so we're going to add that into the backlog and figure out how to do that. Uh, it's certainly hugely important that we have that there. Um, it's El Vado if it doesn't. I mean, it just went out for a few hours and, and the, the drain's not draining. And in the lane two, where there was more fish, we actually had a bubbler in there to give them some more oxygen. And, and just in a few hours of the power being out, uh, we learned this uh, very valuable lesson. So luckily they taste good, so it's not a huge loss for us. And we have plenty of fish, and we've redistributed them between the different lanes, so we're good. Anyway, whew, kind of an emergency video. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. It was a little bit nerve-wracking for us, but it ended pretty nice. So I hope you enjoyed cooking with Martian.
Anyway, if you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up, uh, hit subscribe. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, in the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Martian. Out.